something and I turned around And I saw my reflection in the snow-covered hills Till the landslide brought me down Oh, mirror in the sky, what is love? Can the child within my heart rise above? Can I sail through the changing ocean tides? Can I handle the seasons of my life? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been afraid of changing Cause I've built my life around you But time makes you bolder Even children get older Now I'm getting older too Hi, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Landslide by Fleetwood Mac, which was uh, written and performed by Stevie Nicks, incredible singer, one of my all-time favourites. A uh, big thank you to Selena for joining me for the little demo thing at the intro as well. Uh, what we're going to do today is have a look at the kind of a basic version, the strummy version, real simple chords, keeping it real simple, and then we're going to go to a close-up and check out a more detailed version of how you'd start to do all of the finger style patterns, because that's really the kind of the big deal with this tune. So uh, we need a capo at the third fret to start off with. Uh, now now there's two main chord sequences. So the first one, which is used for the intro and the verses, starts off with a regular C chord. And then we go to a G with a B bass. Now I'd recommend moving the second finger over to the second fret of the fifth string. Little finger goes down in the third fret of the second string. That would be the G with the B bass. Now, officially in that chord, you wouldn't want the open E string ringing out, but in this particular song, it sounds great. Officially, it would be a G6 with a B bass, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a G with a B bass, and if you accidentally hit the thin open E string, it's going to sound fine. Uh, the next chord we go to is an A minor chord. It's regular A minor, or you can make it an A minor 7. If you're doing the finger style kind of fancy version, you probably want to be doing an A minor 7. So if, to do that, you just lift off the third finger. So you'd have open A string and then second fret, open G string, first fret, and then open E string. Okay, so A minor 7. And then it goes back to the G with the B bass. So simply two beats on each one, that first progression. So C, G with the B bass, to A minor or A minor 7, back to G with the B bass. That's it. That's the first sequence. And we use that for the intro and all the verses. Of course, we can put the finger style on it, but if you're not up for doing the finger style, you can totally strum this. I took my love, I took it down. Just that, you know, keeping it that simple with the strumming will sound really cool. So, uh, but like I said, we'll check out the finger style in just a sec. Uh, so the other sequence, which is for the chorus, and there's a little bridging D7 with an F sharp bass, uh, which just comes in just before the chorus at the end of the last chord sequence. The chorus, we start off with a G chord. And for this one, I'd recommend that you're using the third finger on the thickest string and the little finger on the thinnest string, both in the third fret, muting the fifth string. Okay, because it's particularly when we do the finger style, we want to do a little ornament there, um, like a G sus4 really, I guess it's called, to a regular G. But if you're just strumming, just regular G, uh, and then to a D7 with an F sharp bass. Now, again, the proper grip for that chord would be second fret, muted fifth string, open, second fret, first fret, second fret, using the second finger, third finger, first finger, little finger on the thinner string. Okay, that would be the officially the correct way to do it, but really uh, what you're probably going to be using for the finger style version, and if you want to strum it as well, is just leaving off the little finger. So second fret, mute, open, second, first, and then the thinner string. Again, if you accidentally play that thinner string open, the, the note E, is, it's going to be fine. Well, it's actually the note G with the capo on, but uh, you know, the open E string. Uh, it'll sound fine anyway. Uh, and then we go to a bar of E minor. So G, the two beats, 
D7 with an F sharp bass to a whole bar of E minor. And then we've got a similar sequence to before, C, G with a B bass, A minor or A minor 7, and then the D7 with an F sharp bass at the end of that, which brings us back to the G. So G, D7 with an F sharp bass, E minor. Cause I see my G with a B bass around A minor 7 to D with an F sharp bass. But time older, even E minor gets older. And C is getting G with a B bass to A minor. And at the end of that, we just go back to the G with a B bass. So the very last time through the chorus, we continue the, the kind of the verse chord progression, which was C, G with a B bass, A minor 7, and G with a B bass again, right at the end. You should probably hear that if you've got the songbook. Of course, the chords are going to be written out for you there a little easier. So let's get to a close-up. First of all, I'm going to show you the fretting hand, because there's a couple of little twiddles that happen in the fingerstyle version. It's a little bit easier to be able to see it. So close-up of that, and then we'll get into the fingerstyle. So the first chord sequence is C chord, G with a B bass, A minor 7, and then G with a B bass again. Now the one thing to watch out for, once we start adding in the finger picking pattern, which we'll go through in a sec, we use a little flick off there, the last note of beat 2, 1, E, and, uh, 2, E, and, ah, uh, is a flick off with the second finger going from the second fret, just flicky off to the open string, which is actually really helpful because then it's going to go down on the second fret of the next string. So it gives you a bit of a chance to change chords. On the A minor 7, it happens again. So let's look at the finger picking pattern now for the verses. So uh, we've got a C chord down with the fretting hand. We're going to start with the thumb playing the fifth string, first finger playing the third string, thumb moves over and plays the fourth string, and then second finger will play the second string. One, E, and A. Uh. Okay, then it does the same first part but just leaves off the last note. Thumb, first finger, thumb on the fourth string. So we've got Fifth string, third string, fourth string, second string, fifth string, third string, fourth string. One E and A, uh, two E and. One E and A, uh, two E and. recommend you start off with is just doing that really slowly and getting your fingers used to the pattern. When you feel ready on the very last note you want to flick the second finger off to the open string so you end up with this. One E and A, two E and flick off. One E and A, two E Easier probably just to learn it on the C chord. When you feel confident with the pattern, you'll then move it to the G with the B bass as well. So C, G with a B bass, A minor, or A minor 7, flick off, back to the G with the B bass. Again, C. bass, A minor 7, G with a B bass. So before we look at the chorus pattern in detail, I just want to play it once through so you can get it in perspective. Here we go. So you can see 
see it's the basic chords, but we've got some ornamentation going on here. So we start with the G chord using the third and fourth fingers, but we're going to add the first finger in the first fret of the second string, and that's going to be a flick off. Okay, we're going to be playing the thicker string and that second string together, flicking that first finger off, fourth string, thinner string. We're going to look at the fingering in a little bit more detail in a second, but uh, just get used to being able to use the first finger as a flick off. And the second chord we've got is a D with an F sharp bass, not a D7 yet, okay? So we start using fingers two, three, and four, and then we put the first finger down in the first fret of the second string and we lift off little finger. So we get to the D7 with an F sharp bass. Okay, so G. Okay, then we bring those two fingers two and three together. So they'll be both now in the second fret of the fifth and fourth strings. It's an E minor chord. But notice that we've left the first finger down because we're going to do a little flick off there again. Okay. Then little finger's going to go down in the third fret of the second string. Then off. change to the C. Little finger goes down first before the second finger changes to the G with the B bass. So C. Little finger goes down, then the bass note moves. A minor, but this time we start with the first finger off and do a hammer on. Then we go to the D7 with the F sharp bass. Do a little hammer on with the little finger and lift it off again. Okay, now let's look at the finger picking part for the chorus. This one's kind of complicated, but uh, we'll take it just nice and slow. So we're going to start with the thumb playing the thicker string, second finger picking the second string. Then you'll do the flick off with the first finger. Thumb goes over and plays the fourth string. Third finger plays the thinner string. Okay, then it goes thumb on the thicker string. First finger plays the G string. And thumb again plays the fourth string. So that's the part that's used for the G chord. Together, flick off, thumb, third finger, thumb, one thumb. Okay, now we move to the D with the F sharp bass, and we're going to play thumb and second finger together. First finger is going to play the third string, and then thumb will play the open D string. One E and two E and. Just start off with that little pattern. Second finger, second string, and thumb together. First finger, thumb plays the open string. When you're confident with that, then lift little finger off, put the first finger down, so we get this little movement in the melody. And then when you feel confident with that, try sticking those two bits together. I should note that sometimes on this D with the F sharp I play it. Okay, so I'm adding in another note there. Okay, so sometimes I'm adding an extra one, but you don't need to. Okay, now we move to the E minor, but we're keeping the first finger down, remember. We're going to be doing this pattern with the thumb playing the thicker string, second finger playing the second string. Play, flick off the first finger, thumb goes over to play the fourth string. Third finger will play the thinner string. Thumb again, first finger playing the G string, 
thumb playing the fourth string and little finger will now go down and play the uh, third fret with the fretting hand and second finger will play the second string. Okay, get that part foot down first of all. Take your thumb and second finger together, flick off, thumb, third finger, thumb on the bass, third string, thumb on the fourth string, second finger playing the second string. Now we've got this pattern, thumb, third finger, thumb, second finger playing the open second string, thumb on the bass again, first finger playing the G string, and then thumb again, playing the fourth string. It's a little bit of a weird pattern this one. So, thumb, thinner string, thumb, second string, thumb, third string, thumb. <laughs> Combined with the first part of the E minor, Now we move to the C chord, we do this pattern, thumb playing the 5th string, 1st finger playing the 3rd string, thumb playing the 2nd string, 2nd finger playing the 2nd string. Okay, this is a friendly pattern from before. So we're going to do thumb, 1st finger, thumb, 2nd finger on the, G, on the C again, same thing. But remember on that last note of the C chord, you're going to put little finger on the fretting hand. This is on the third fret. There we change. Now we move the bass note over the G with the B bass. Same thing. Thumb, one, two, three. Thumb, one, thumb, one, thumb. Okay, there's nothing on that last sixteenth note. One, E, and, up. Uh, two, E, and, up. Uh, three, E, and, up. Uh, four, E, and. Now we change to the A minor 7, we're going to play thumb and second string together. Do a little hammer on, thumb, second finger. Okay, the last part, thumb playing the bass note again, first finger playing the third string, thumb playing the fourth string. Now we change to the D7 with the F sharp bass. We're going to play thumb on the bass string, on the thicker string, sixth string, and we're going to play the second string. Do the little hammer on with the little finger in the third fret on the fretting hand. Thumb plays the fourth string. Then we play the uh, second string again, which will be now little finger comes off, so it's the first fret. Bass note, first finger, thumb playing the fourth string. recommend that you take each little chunk of this and practice it over and over again. Then combine with the A minor before it. Okay, the whole pattern now. Learning songs with complicated fingerstyle patterns can be pretty challenging. The trick is really to do it very, very slowly and to make sure that you've got it written out in front of you. Now, I've actually made a couple of small changes from the first edition of the songbook for this particular part. I think I'd overcomplicated it a little bit and uh, when you listen to the original recording, there's quite a few different layers of, of guitar going on. So uh, I've kind of stripped out some of the other layers just to make it a little bit more 
the whole thing sounds more like the record and it's actually a little simpler to play. So uh, I'm actually going to put a tab of that up on the site there, the, just that little section for the chorus pattern, just to make sure that you get the finger picking pattern right, because a lot easier to see those things when they're written in front of you, a lot, a lot easier to see when they're written in front of you. So uh, you might want to go and check the website out for that little update. Um, Really, the big deal is just doing it slowly and do, just take one little section, practice it over and over again, because you don't want to be trying to think about it, especially if you want to play and sing it. You know, you really have to get that stuff automated. So you've got to do it over and over again, one little section. When you're cool with that, learn the next little section, practice it over and over until you're familiar with it, then join it up to the section you learned before. Learn another section, practice that up, join it up to the bit that you learned before. It's really the only way to do it. It's what I had to do when I learned this song as well. You know, it's, it's, it's an important thing. The more you do it, the faster you get at, at kind of joining the bits together and figuring out the pattern because they're, with this song, the, you know, these patterns are pretty familiar for other tunes. So if you learn this song, you'll find a lot of other songs, you know, easier to learn once you've got this one down. So uh, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. It's a beautiful song. Uh, make sure of course that you're listening to the record again as well that's a pretty big deal uh, and uh, it'll help you get the groove on it's a lot of fun to play along with this as well it's, uh, no, it feels nice so uh, enjoy it I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye